Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from Storage Review. We've got another thing that came in uh, the lab. This is a TerraMaster two bay direct attached storage uh, unit. Pretty neat little guy. TerraMaster does a good job of making enclosures that have the look and feel of the aluminum uh, enclosures, the design of something that content creators tend to like, but without the expense. So as much as we all love the G technology and Lacie enclosures and hard drives and all those things. We don't always have Lacie kind of budgets. That's where some of these other guys come into play like TerraMaster. Still high quality products, don't get me wrong, but just a lower cost. So let's go ahead and see what we've got in here. Now I do know this came out a little while ago and they ran out of stock. So our unit got uh, pushed back a little bit, but that's okay. We've had plenty to work on in the interim. So it comes in this little bag. Pretty well packaged with the foam. All right, so we've got the main unit here. And we can see two bay unit, power button on the front, large fan on the back, power supply, display port, uh, two Thunderbolt 3, We've got a reset pin and then a little guy here to manage the RAID. Really, really tiny, but we can do RAID 0, RAID 1, or JBOD as you would expect from a two drive thing. Now, from a design standpoint, we've had units like this in before, and sometimes people get a little bent out of shape about the handle because the handle's not removable, it's, it's uh, attached to the case. I kind of like it. I mean, you can walk in the park with it, sing a little song, picnic basket in one hand, your RAID in the other. Uh, you could be sitting here working on your on your video and a stranger comes in and you could bludgeon them with this. With a couple hard drives in there, this could be a serious weapon. So keep that in mind. The handle does build flexibility. Taking a look in the uh, accessory box, we've got the power adapter. It comes with a screwdriver. Now, a lot of enclosures like this, they sort of chintz out. They don't give you any of these advanced features like a screwdriver. And while you may have a screwdriver already, who couldn't use another one? We've got that. We've got our Thunderbolt 3 cord, as evidenced by the 3 and the lightning bolt. And there are some screws and a little, a uh, little teeny tiny screwdriver. That'll help us adjust the RAID setting probably. And then a little teeny poker that'll be able to press that uh, reset pin. And we've got some labels that we'll probably never use and some other things, the documents inside here. Overall, you've got everything you need to get started. Now we've got a couple options with this and we're gonna have to see, since it's been a little while since I've worked with these trays, because I brought down some SSDs. Now these are the Hynix SATA drives and yes, they've got the tape for the drive stickers because we run a lab, they run a lab and that's how things go. If we can't get these easily adapted for whatever reason, I brought down some HGST hard drives for a more traditional user. And because we can, we still have three and a half inch SSDs. Now this is a, a relic of days gone by, uh, but every now and then we like to bust out the uh, OCZ Talos three and a half inch. A funny story, we actually had a Drobo one time, we filled up with these things not because they were particularly fast or really all that impressive, but just because we could and because having a three and a half inch SSD is somehow kind of niftier than putting these in a tray or in an icy dock adapter or whatever else. Just, this is kind of fun, isn't it? Even though we could probably fit, I don't know, 700 terabytes of uh, flash storage in this enclosure. Anyway, we're going to load up some drives connected to the Mac behind me and just see what we can get from a performance perspective. All right, so we're coming in a little closer. I did find the screws and the holes that align for the SSDs. You just never really know with these things how the trays are designed. Uh, sometimes they just want to slot the drives in without a tray and so it makes it harder to use SSDs. But these trays are pretty nice actually with uh, plenty of different screw holes for different drives. So the good news is that means we're not going to use these hard drives because you know, if you came here to watch hard drive benchmark results in a two bay uh, DAS, you'll be sorely disappointed because we're going to use the flash. So let me drop these guys in. 
if you really want to know about the hard drives, just say 160 megabytes per second read and write in RAID 1 and double that in RAID 0. All right, so we've got the uh, SSDs in. The only downside with the SSDs is now that as we consider this as a weapon, it's not as heavy with quite as much leverage as the hard drives would be. So you're going to have to balance your decision about how much damage you want to inflict with this versus the performance of your storage. Anyway, we can see, or I can see, I probably won't show up, that it's set. There's a little red arrow on single, which means the drives will be individually addressable. For this, we're going to use our tiniest little screwdriver and turn it to RAID 0. Now, one nifty thing, besides the cutest screwdriver ever, is that because it's got a hardware switch on it, it's got a little hardware RAID board in there, and that's a lot nicer in my perspective for for these types of use cases where you can change it, hit the reset pin, you'll blow away all the data, and that's okay as long as you know what you're doing. The alternative is a software-based RAID system where you've got to load an app, connect the thing, and then manage it that way. But um, this is pretty nifty, and so we've selected the RAID. Let's go ahead and plug it in. We'll connect the Thunderbolt 3 cable as well and then shortly expect the Mac to get grumpy. Before that though, I am gonna put this pin in there, hit the reset. Now the fun part about this, oh, I, perhaps I should probably give it power first while I do that. The fun part about this is that um, there's not actually a manual in the box. There's a warranty card and there's a, uh, a thing in several languages that tells you to check out the uh, uh, TerraMaster website and that's all cool, but um, sort of flying in the dark. I guess we could have looked it up on their website, but who has time for that when you're running a busy lab? Okay, so we're green. We've got green lights on our hard drives, which are in fact SSDs, you sneaky little fellow. And now the Mac sees it. It's upset that it's not formatted, which is fine. We've got uh, disk utility. Ah, oh, it shows up as fast Terra Master Media. That's kind of nifty. I like how it reminds you that you're living on the edge with RAID 0 and that it'll be fast. Uh, we see 3.84 terabytes, which incidentally I forgot to mention, these are uh, two terabyte class SATA drives from uh, SK Hynix. These are enterprise drives because we are enterprise grade. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this guy up because it wants to be fast. We'll make it fast and it should take a second go away pop back with our fancy new name and we don't want to use it as a backup but we're done i'll flip over to black magic select our target drive and there it is somehow it's even better with the capitalized a so we'll go ahead and hit this and see what we get coming up with uh, 520 megabytes per second on the right. And come on, buddy. 7, 710, you can do it. 715 on the reads. And when you look at the, the black magic little chart here, that gets us pretty much everything. We're only short on uh, a total of seven checkboxes. So for a portable unit with four terabytes of storage inside, we could do better. Uh, we could use hard drives if you really wanted the capacity or, again, if you want it to be a better bludgeoning weapon. And we could do different things. We could do JBOD. We could do RAID 1. We could do whatever you want out of this 2-bay unit. This guy's 250 bucks retail. Kind of hard to argue with that from a value perspective. For what it gets you, it's got the second port on the back for daisy chaining other devices. It's got the display port for passing that through. If we got real fancy and hooked this monitor up or, or one of our others uh, to the Mac or any other system. But from a workflow standpoint, we're getting pretty decent performance here from SATA drives. So all in all, there's a lot to like. The screwdrivers are great. The mini screwdriver is the greatest. And uh, we'll finish putting this thing to work and check back on storagereview.com in a little while for the full review.